morning. <laughs> the sun is getting high and it's getting light. I might have overslept, but you know, I, after yesterday, I, <laughs> I probably need it. But I think the game plan right now is I'm gonna grab the bear bag. I'm not all that hungry, even though a nice cup of coffee does sound pretty stellar right now. This life bringing cup of joe is brought to you in part by Noble Tree Coffee. <laughs> no free shout outs, but they reached out to me and uh, they, they showed me some pretty nifty travel options for backpacking, camping, etc. And I get, you know, I thought I'd give it a try and this is this is pretty dang good. Good coffee, better than the <laughs> instant Folgers I was drinking. But I'll get this uh, down the hatch, maybe some trail mix and we'll get moving in that direction. Jesus Christ. Wow, leave no trace guys, good job. Great job. We'll make sure to pick that up on our way out. All right, my Onyx says we have five miles to the lake. And I'm thinking that got a little bit more pep in my step and a lighter backpack. So I think we can make it there in better time than we did, you know, <laughs> yesterday. Oh man, we are getting a lesson in altitude adjustments right now. So let's get our hike on and get blasting down this trail and get on some dang cutthroat. Let's go. Hey bear. Hey bear. Well, it would seem as though we've made it to Shangri-La, literal paradise. I, and fun fact, we have it all to ourselves, at least as of right now. This is this is so incredible. Are you? Guys, this view is amazing. This is actually the Continental Divide. That's what you're looking at right now. So that's pretty neat. <laughs> but before we get fishing going, my stomach is is quite rumbly. I'm gonna get some get some food going, get some water going. Get our rods rigged up, maybe dry out our clothes a little bit, and hey, we'll be fishing, so stick with. Yeah, we want to get that dried out. Yomp-skied that, oh my gosh. Oh my god, that was a big bug too. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs>
let's give you a quick look. The first Rio Grande cutthroat of the trip. That is fantastic. We'll get this guy back. That might not be the best thing. That might have been on our first cast. That's some seriously bad luck. That is what we got him on. Size 20 some odd midge. Crazy. When that lake surface is smooth as glass and that sun is shining down from on high, this kind of fishing is extremely visual. So when you do see one, you kind of got to be quick draw McGraw with that double haul and results may vary. Oh yeah, oh rats, right away. Oh, for Christ's sake, I need to set the hook. That is a fantastic cutty. That is so nice. Came up and slammed that leech. See ya, sir. Kind of a tan and pink uh, leech. Figured it looked like a, a nice cutty, so that's what we got him on. We really had to strip set that guy in. Do you see that? I took a couple steps back too. That was hilarious. While I'm stripping in, I'm always keeping my eyes peeled. And from my right, I can see a fish cruising in. So I made a nice, quick, short cast to where he would be. Strip, strip, strip. And the result is... Wow. Okay, this one is absolutely gorgeous. As you might be able to hear, we're no longer alone. There's a big group of backpackers over there just taking a rest, which is totally fine. I think they'll be on their way here soon. But the bites really slowed down. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna switch up, see if I can't uh, <laughs> elicit a bite by changing up my approach. And maybe something a little bigger on the dry fly, maybe something a little smaller on the on the nymph or the streamer, I guess. I don't know, we'll see. This is the joy of lake fishing. It's <laughs> just switch up till you find what works. These guys are proven to be quite floppy. But that seems to be about the average size. That is a fantastic fish. He is so good looking. And he's gone. That's so sick. been a while since our last fish, but I will say, the sun is high in the sky now and the wind, it's really giving the, the water a nice chop. But I found a really nice drop off where I can see it go from pretty light color to just dark, dark blue. That means there's probably gonna be, you know, a depth change. <laughs> so I've changed up my rig yet again, going back to uh, kind of more of a, a leech bite. I had a, a leech and a midge on and that wasn't working, so I'm double leeching right now and fingers crossed, that is the money. I push it down. Oh, literally first cast in there. Let's go. They like that big boy. And I flirt with sorrow. And the company. Come on, brother. Yeah, you're a spotty son of a gun, aren't you? Well, that was all but first cast of the new spot right on that drop off. Oh, that's exactly what you want. Now these guys have been Flopmaster 3000s. They're so beautiful. Ah, there we go. That, <laughs> that is excellent. See ya, sir. Yes, let's go.
Oh, yeah, baby. Just a, pa a passerby, got him. <laughs> Another great fish. Look at that guy. That's a leech eating son of a gun right there. <laughs> what a great fish. <laughs> That's so sick. See you, sir. Cruising for a bruising. Ah, oh, that's so sick. There we go, there we go. Little guy. <laughs> These cutthroat are the biggest flop boys I've ever seen. But they're gorgeous. So it's okay, I give them a pass. Check this out, y'all. We got ourselves a little Yodi action. Where'd you go, bitch? I was wondering why all the ground squirrels are sounding off. That's a that's a coyote right there. They're not having any of that. You can kind of hear the warning sounds going off. I was wondering what was going on, but all these rodents in the valley are freaking out because there's a coyote passing through. How cool is that? See ya. There we go. That feels like a better fit. Just gotta strip set into him, baby. Oh, look at this little pika. I think here is as good a place as any to listen to the pika, watch the trout <laughs> eat dry flies, not mine, and maybe uh, grab some lunch. See, that might be rain, folks. Been quite a few uh, missed hook sets since our last fish, but that's a that's a dandy. That's a bullet right there. I'm gonna send him back real quick. Okay, this is a perfect example. I see a cruising fish. Oh, he just ate. These guys are usually pretty aggressive. There we go. Yes, that is what we want. This afternoon has been all about the cruising fish. Any fish that we're actually getting to go after our, our leech has been one that's cruising by. And usually those are the aggressive ones, so. Man, he's beautiful, you gotta get a look at this guy. Check out that eye, this one has it too, that's so cool. What is going on there, buddy? Such floppy boys, I tell ya. Get you one last two on this goofy looking Rio Grande, man. That's so sick, we'll send it back. But that really seems to be the name of the game, catching those cruisers slipping. Here comes one, here comes one. Oh, I spooked him, rats.
Now, unlike some of the other ones, oh, well, he's gone. This is looking to be our last Rio Grande cutthroat here at West U Lake. <laughs> Let's send this guy back swimming. Well, as much as it pains me to say, I think that's gonna be our last fish. So it's time to pack up the bag, get everything kind of ready for our inevitable hike out. There's a couple things I need to do, fill up water, uh, you know, pack down the rods, everything. Maybe clean, <laughs> I'm dirty as hell right now, and yeah, and it's that hike out. We've got five long miles, mostly downhill though, so that's that's a good thing. That's a win. Well, let's uh, let's get after it. All right, you know the deal. We're gonna get dinner ready, clean, change, bed. Whew. All right, well we let that sit. I'm gonna get changed. Try and clean up a little bit, get some, uh, self-care going I got all sorts of stuff going on and then uh, yeah hopefully dinner will be ready and we can chow down and here we are again yet another peak meal and I'm so off the wall excited to try this teriyaki the chicken last night was it was really good this this oh my gosh this smells amazing and I think it's it's always kind of one of them things it's like uh, yeah, looks good, smells good. You could put glue in front of me and I'd probably eat it right now. I'm so dang hungry. After a day that we had, I think I'm running off of like a couple handfuls of trail mix and a cliff bar. That's it. So this is our first real meal and I uh, I don't know if I can wait any longer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go in. Mm. <laughs> Mm. All I can say is two for two. Oh my gosh. Looks like I got peppers, green beans, rice, carrots, chicken. Mm. Are you kidding me? This is amazing. If I had another thumb to give, I'd give it. That's two thumbs up good. Mm. All right, enough more of you watching me eat. I'm gonna finish this up, scarf this down, and then we'll, we'll, meet, we'll link back up <laughs> for now. Let's take a look at this amazing valley. This is best seat in the house. Well, that shadow is, it's the curtain. That's our calling card. Mother Nature is telling us that, uh, son, <laughs> it is the beginning of the end our time here in Colorado, our time in the Women Nooch Wilderness. I, I hope I'm saying that right. I, I try to look up pronunciations, Women Nooch, not the E, so it's not Women Nooch -E. I wanted to say that though, <laughs> but for real. It's coming to an end. This is our last night, and overall I have to say that this is, well, number one, one of my bigger solo trips, which is crazy to think about. 
And number two, just so, so much more physically tasking than I thought. You know, you can sit there and you can you can look at a map and it says 13 miles. You can look at the elevation change. Oh, 2,000, okay. You can look at your backpack and there's 50, 40, you know, 60, whatever weight you put to that. But until you get your boots on the trail and you actually gut it out, the, the physical requirements, I mean, it's... Maybe that's why I have such a bad memory because I forget how... <laughs> How much work it is <laughs> but it's work well worth it I mean look at this valley it's the, the the I guess what I'm getting at is the the physical stress that goes into it is almost it's almost made worth it and then some by this or by the stream fishing that we did or the lake fishing that we did it, there's something about having to work a little extra harder, having to, to grit it out. What um, I think Stephen Ranella calls gur. You, you gotta have a little bit of gur. Yeah, your feet are wet, who cares? Blisters rubbing, I don't know. Yeah, of course they are. <laughs> you just gotta gur through it and, and it, it brings you to some weird euphoria, some weird high sitting at the top of the world looking at this. It's just, it's just so, it's so rewarding, and I think overall, I came here to do two things: one, high alpine stream fishing, which we did, check; two, high alpine lake fishing, which is quite possibly my favorite thing to do in the world. <laughs> like, if I, if I had to die, if I was like, I got cancer and was gonna die in like two weeks, it'd be like, okay, well, I'm going back to that lake and just leave me there till I die. <laughs> It is seriously the most fun I can I can imagine having. But we came, we saw, we conquered. We did exactly what we wanted to do on top of all the physical requirements, on top of managing a camp. It It's so fulfilling. It's so rewarding. And I am, well, I'm biased when I say I think you should do it too because there's not much better feeling in the world than sitting where I am looking at, looking at that. I mean, I know it's it's not readily available to all physical requirements, uh, monetary requirements, time requirements. It's I am I have the 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 beauty and the pleasure of being a bachelor with ample time and uh, and disposable cash. Let's just say. So, I guess I should retract that statement and just and just say that. Uh, if you're looking to do something like this, don't hesitate. Pull the trigger. And for those of you who have stuck around for this entire endeavor, you know, the, the beginning, middle, end, the, the crescendo, the peak, the valley, what a, you, thank you so much. And it's so very strange as I'm sitting alone on a big old rock looking at this massive valley. Oh, and the Continental Divide, by the way, talking to a black box and trying to emote like actually how thankful I am for your support. I never really, it feels strange. And if I could <laughs> reach through and shake your hand and say, thank you so much, I would. And I, you know, I, it wouldn't be a dead fish. It'd be a firm handshake, I promise. <laughs> but like, it's it's seriously so strange to think where this community is, is going and, and how fast it's growing and the, the possibilities of, I mean, who knows where this thing could go. I. I I work a nine to five job and can't say that I love it, but I love doing this. And, and to think that this is a possibility that I could be doing this more, that gets me so excited and it's, it's all because of you guys' support. So again, thank you. <laughs> oh, but as that curtain gets pulled tight, my eyes are gonna be shutting. So I think I'm gonna scoot. And I just got to say, as always, folks, make sure to keep those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.